As a beginner, choosing a new sewing machine can be both exciting and daunting at the same time. There's so many to choose from, but fear not, I'm here to help. I'm Anna, I work here at the sewing studio, and I'm gonna talk you through our top two best machines for beginners. In second place, we have the Janome 725S, and in first place, the Brother Innovis A16. And what we look for in a machine for beginners is ease of use, some nice features, but not too many to be overwhelming, but also something that you can grow with along your sewing journey. So let's take a look at them both in more depth. The Janome 725S, it has 25 stitches plus one buttonhole, and that buttonhole is an automatic buttonhole, so it does it in one step. This is where you would select your stitches, which are detailed along the top here for you. You have some utility stitches and then some stretch versions of those stitches for if you want to sew any stretchy fabric. You have the ability to change the length of the stitch and also the width of the stitch. And this little lever here is to do a reverse stitch to secure them. When threading the machine, on the top, everything is numbered for you. So in stages of where you need to go, and winding a bobbin is really easy. It has a top loading bobbin, so that just drops in, making it easier to thread. And also it has a clear cover, so you can see when the bobbin's running out. It comes with a few different presser feet, which I'll show you in a moment. And they're a snap-on presser feet, so they're very easily changed with just a lever that drops down, and then you drop the foot and it clamps back on. There's also a dial on the side that gives you the ability to change the pressure on the presser foot. So when this is engaged, there's a certain amount of poundage of pressure that's applied. You can slacken that off slightly, and that helps to sew finer and thinner fabrics. There's also a built-in needle threader to help you thread the eye of the needle. There's storage at the front of the machine, and this pops off and gives you your free arm for sewing hems, cuffs, bags, things like that, just makes life easier. And you also have the ability, if I lift that up a minute, to drop the feed dogs. There's a little lever at the back here, just grab that, <laughs> and you can drop that feed dogs. Now you would do that for doing any sort of darning work, any free motion embroidery, um, textiles, things like that. As I mentioned, it comes with a few different presser feet. So you have your standard zigzag foot that's already on the machine, a zipper foot, which is also really useful for piping, an adjustable blind hem foot, an overcasting foot for securing all your seams. Now the one step buttonhole requires a buttonhole foot, which is this one here. And there's also a separate buttonhole foot for if you need to do a buttonhole that's larger than the one step allows. It also comes with a few accessories. You have a seam ripper for undoing any stitches when you go wrong, a little brush for cleaning the machine, screwdriver to change the needle and remove the needle plate, an extra spool pin for if you wanted to do any twin needle work, a felt pad that stops the spool from spinning uncontrollably and some spool caps as well to stop it shooting off the machine. You have some extra needles in there and some extra bobbins and a quilting guide that slots into the ankle of the machine to get even quilting lines. Let's start with winding a bobbin. So you want to take off the little spool cap, pop your reel of thread on and then pop that cap in and that stops the spool of thread from spinning off when it's rotating. And as we saw with the attachments, there's a couple of different sizes there for different size reels that you might use. You then want to take the thread under this piece here, and it's a good idea at this point to just give it a little tug to make sure it's fully under that disc. That's what sets the tension on the bobbin, so if it's not in there, your bobbin will be wound too loose and you'll have lots of sewing problems. Now on these bobbins, there is a hole in the top and you want to pop the thread up through. Oh, that end's a bit fluffy, let me snip that off. Up through the hole in the bobbin. There. And then whilst holding onto that, pop the bobbin on top of the spool pin. You then flick that over to the right 
and I'm just going to hold this piece at the top here because if you let go once it starts spinning that will just disappear and again your tension will be wrong and pop my foot on the foot pedal do a few rotations and then just snip off that piece and carry on Now I'm just going to be doing some test sewing for you so I don't need to wind a full bobbin but if you needed to you just carry on and then stop once it's full by taking your foot off the foot pedal. So you pop that back to the left and I'm just going to snip that off and I'll show you how to thread that in a moment. So to thread the needle you don't need to use this piece here. The thread goes under there, down number two around number three. Now this is very important, this take up lever. If the thread isn't in here, you'll have all sorts of trouble. And you're just going from right to left and make sure that it's popped in the front of the lever there. Back down through the machine. In behind the guide at the top of the needle. And then we're ready to thread the eye of the needle using the needle threader. Now this is the needle threader here. They're a really useful little gadget. There's a tiny, tiny little hook in the back there that comes down and shoots through the eye of the needle. Now it's really important that the needle is in the right position because this comes down to the same point every single time. So if the needle is too low and you come down with the needle threader, that little hook is gonna hit the back of the needle and bend and then it will not work in the future. So you wanna make sure the needle is in the right position. It can be slightly different for every machine, so you just need to work it out on your machine when you get it. Pop it down, lay the thread in under there, in under there so it's under the little hook, and then you just let go, and it draws a loop in behind that you can then pull through. To install the bobbin, this slides to the right, and you can just pop that out. Now there is a right and a wrong way around for this, and the right way is with the tail of the thread to the left. And then you just drop it, drop it in, and I usually just pop a finger on there so it's not spinning as you're doing this. And you just want to guide it in under the little lip there and take it right the way around to the back. And then what you need to do is draw up that bobbin thread up the needle hole through the top of the machine. So you hold on to that one. I'm just turning the hand wheel to drop the needle down and then tug on that and your bobbin thread is there. And I'm just gonna pop the top back on. Threads under the foot and we're ready to sew. I'm gonna show you how the machine performs on some different types of fabric. So firstly, I've got some thin polyester that's quite slippy. Now I'm gonna choose a straight stitch for this. So I can see the straight stitch here is letter A. So I'm gonna turn this dial around to the letter A. Currently it's on no stitch length. So if I start sewing, it's not gonna go anywhere. A standard is about two and a half millimetres. So I'm just gonna pop it there. through that with no problem at all as you can see the stitches are nice and flat now I didn't need to move the fabric very much it has very good fabric control on there which helps to keep your stitches straight moving on to some stretchy fabric I'm going to choose a stretch stitch which are these ones in black here so the letters are still the same but what you want to do is change the stitch length around to SS and the black for stretch stitch so just move that around and I'm going to keep it on the stretch straight stitch for this type of fabric. I've also popped in a jersey needle as that's the right one for this type of fabric. Ooh. 
Again, it's controlled the fabric really, really well. It lays nice and flat. There's no sort of waviness, which is what you don't want with the stretchy fabric. And you can still stretch the fabric with the stitch. And lastly, I have a piece of denim. I'm gonna pop it back to a standard straight stitch, so come off the stretch stitches. And because this is thicker fabric, I'm gonna increase the stitch length just a little bit, so to three millimeters. I've also put in a denim needle. Again, that's the right needle for this type of fabric, so that means you'll get the best results. And as you can see, that was quite a breeze for the machine. I'll take this out. If you wonder what I'm doing on the side here, there's a little thread cutter on the side there, which features on most machines. That stitch is really lovely and neat and uniform, both front and back, and again, the fabric is laying nice and flat. So let's move on to our first place machine and I'll show you how that handles different types of fabric. Our first place machine for beginners is the Brother Innovis A16. Different from the Janome machine, it is a computerized machine. That means it has a few more features on it that makes it a lot easier to use. You have 16 stitches on this one with three different buttonhole options. That's a one step buttonhole. You have the ability to change the stitch length and the stitch width, but because it's a computerized machine, as you're selecting the stitches, these are preset to a default. So you can just select your stitch and start sewing without needing to change anything, but you can if you want to. With it being computerized, you have two options of how to use the machine. So it comes with a foot pedal, to start and stop the machine, but it also has what's called a start stop button here. And then this slider here is what controls your speed. So you've got slow, medium and high. Now, even if you choose to control the machine with the foot pedal, this still acts as a speed limiter. So for instance, if you had the machine set to midway and you put your foot flat to the floor on the foot pedal, you'll only go as fast as that. So it's really good for beginners to help you gain control with the machine. It has an electronic needle up down button. So you can set for the needle to stay in your work when you stop sewing and you can pivot to your next seam. And it also has a locking stitch and your reverse. So a locking stitch means instead of doing a reverse stitch to secure your stitches, the locking stitch just does three or four stitches on the spot. Now that's really useful for if you're doing anything decorative, like top stitching, you might not wanna see the bulk of the reversing. So just the three stitches on the spot gives a neater result. Threading is really easy. There's number guides and diagrams on the top of the machine for you, both for winding a bobbin and for threading the top thread. When it comes to the eye of the needle, it has what's called a one action needle threader, which is super easy to do. It has a top loading bobbin, which means the bobbin just drops in. It also has what's called a quick set. So when you're threading the machine, you lay it in this little piece here, and then you can just start sewing. You don't need to draw up your bobbin thread. It comes with a few different presser feet. Again, it's a snap on, snap off system. So you just pop the lever and it falls off and then line it up in the right position. <laughs> drop it down and it snaps back on. The feed dogs drop with the little lever on the back here. So again, for any darning work, any free motion, you've got storage in the front of the machine and this pops off to give you your free arm. As I mentioned, it comes with a few different presser feet. So you have your standard zigzag foot that's on the machine, a zipper slash piping foot, a blind hem foot, overcasting foot, a foot to perform the one step buttonhole, and a foot for sewing on buttons. It also comes with a range of accessories, a seam ripper, a little brush, two different types of screwdriver, an extra spool pin for if you want to do any twin needle work, and also there's a twin needle in there for you, as well as some other standard needles. Three different sizes of spool caps, and this is a spool net, so if you wanted to use a big cone, it just helps for the thread to come off consistently and not get tangled, and some extra bobbins. To wind a bobbin, take off the spool cap, 
pop your thread on, and pop the spool cap back in. And then following the guide, you want to go under there and in under there, and then around and under again that little tension disc there. So give it a little tug to make sure it's in firmly in place. And then pop your empty bobbin on the top in place. And then you want to wind the thread around clockwise quite a few times so it's securely on there. And then on this little grey piece here, there's a little cutter that you can use just to cut off, whoops, just to cut off the excess there. And then if you've got the foot pedal plugged in, you can just put your foot flat to the floor or you can use the start stop button. So you want to shoot that over to the right and then go. I'm going to increase the speed so it winds quicker. Again, I don't need a full bobbin, so I'm just going to stop it there. Um, but when it gets full, just stop it where you need to stop it. Flick that back over and then you can pop that off. Use one of the cutters to nick it off and then put that there to thread up in a moment. To thread the needle, again, following the guide and the numbers on the top, you're going to go under that same one and under there down and around and then right to left. Again, super important that it's in that lever there. And then in the thread guide at the top of the needle, now you're onto the needle threader, which as I was saying before, is a simpler one action. So you still need to make sure the needle's in the right position, but the best thing with this machine is that it has a needle up, needle down button. So if you press it once, it pops the needle down, press it again, needle's up, and it's in the right position for the needle threader. I would also drop the presser foot just to give the threader a little bit more room. And then all you're doing is popping the thread under there and under that one. There's a little cutter on the side where you can cut off the excess. And then there's a lever on the side here and you just go, ta-da, and there's your loop and the needle's threaded. The bobbin, I'll raise the presser foot again, pop that to the right and take the top off. Again, there is a right and a wrong way around, so with the tail to the left, drop that in, pop your finger on to put some tension and there, there is a little arrow there and you're just going underneath that little arrow. And then this is the quick set. So you just run it in there, around here, and then there's a little cutter, and you can just cut off the excess. Pop the lid back on, and you're ready to sew. There's no need to draw up your bobbin thread. Having laid it in here, it puts the thread in such a way that when we drop the needle in a moment when we start sewing, it will automatically pick up the bobbin thread. So I've got a piece of polyester that I'm going to sew a straight stitch on. And to select the straight stitch here, you've got either the straight stitch in the left position or in the centre position. I prefer it in the centre position, so I'm just going to turn my dial around to number two. And then you'll notice up here the stitch width and the stitch length are preset. So it's defaulted to two and a half millimetres, which I'm going to leave it on for my stitch length. Drop the needle down. Now I'm not going to use the foot control, I'm going to show you the start stop button. So I'm going to pop the speed down to slow and just start. You'll notice that I was increasing the speed with this slider here and then I just press the start stop button to stop sewing. So I'll take the needle out. And there, that's a really nice stitch on that fabric, both top and bottom. And again, it's nice and flat, no puckering, nice control. Moving on to some stretch fabric, I've popped a stretch needle in and I'm gonna choose a stretch straight stitch, which on this machine is number 10. So I'm just gonna turn the dial around to number 10. Again, my stitch length is preset for me and the width is zero because it's right in the left hand side.
You'll notice again there that my hands were off the fabric. It has great fabric control, which helps to keep you going straight. It's done a really nice stitch. Again, it's laying nice and flat, no waviness, and you can stretch the fabric with the stitch. And lastly, some denim fabric. I'm gonna pop it back to a straight stitch. And this time, because the fabric is thicker, I'm gonna increase the stitch length, and that's just using this little plus here. Three's probably enough. I've put a denim needle on the machine. Again, it's a really nice, neat stitch, both top and bottom. And there's no puckering, it's all lying flat. Yeah, it's done a really good job. So let's put the two machines together and have a recap. So as you've seen, both these machines handle different types of fabric really, really well. Our second place machine, the Janome 725S, is a mechanical machine, it's very easy to use, comes with a few different feet options and also a hard cover. Our first place machine, the Brother Innovis A16, is the top machine because it is computerized. So it has lots of features in there, which makes it really easy for beginners. Also has the really super easy needle threader on there. It comes with a range of different feet and also a protective dust cover. I hope that gives you a good insight into how easy these machines are to use. But fear not, if you're still a little bit daunted, they both do come with a physical manual. And don't forget, we're here to help too. So come on board and bring us along with your sewing journey.